destroy the child, corrupt them all. I have ANC report with me today is a German citizen, and we are going to be talking about migrant crisis and problems with different German political parties, specific history, browbeating, leftists, etc. Uh, welcome to the program, sir. I want to first talk about Merkel because there's a lot of misconceptions about her, and she's very important, uh, and she has a very important role in the migrant crisis and so forth. I give you the floor to talk about Merkel. Explain some of these misconceptions. That is true. There are a lot of uh, conspiracy theories about Merkel and uh, that she's half Jewish and all these things. What's actually true is that when the uh, DDR fall apart, fell apart and um, the communists were still there, but their state was not, there was a communist think tank in East Germany led by a Stasi agent, in which Merkel was part of. And they were discussing how to infiltrate the West. And first they obviously thought about the Green Party because there are a lot of Marxists in there, but they quickly realized that it would not go anywhere. If we they call them watermelons. Green exactly. Green on the outside, red on the inside. Exactly. 100% true. And as I said, the think tank was led by an actual Stasi agent. This is not a conspiracy. This is true. I know this from a CDU member that is Merkel's party, the Christian Democratic Union. And it did not take long that after the fall of the East German part, of which was communists, they infiltrated the CDU under coal, which that back then used to be a closed border, conser actually conservative party. And Merkel and uh, other people who also were of these types, um, conservative, uh, masquerading as conservatives, but actual communists, infiltrated this party and turned it over a process of 15 years into a far left party, essentially, into an open border party. It sounds so similar. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, it sounds similar to other movements. Right, who could it be? B, B. Yeah. Yes. But as you see, you don't need people that echo to achieve that goal. It is also very possible with just normal uh, communists. What is also important about Merkel, and which is also true, is that Merkel family fought against Germany in both world wars. That so, is interesting. Right. And Merkel is ethnically Polish, or she has history in that. Her family name is Kasmierczak, which was uh, changed into Kasner, and which then became through a marriage Merkel and the name she kept. It's a little and, bit like John Kerry. Right, right. But I, I don't think that, uh, that the Jewish rule element is present in, in, uh, in no, Merkel. No, but the Polish is, and, and she's hiding her identity. Right. That's all I'm saying. Right, yeah. right. right. I do believe she has, uh, through her, her past, anti-German attitudes. Certainly, she has no uh, connection to the people or the country whatsoever. And in, the, in this case, she can be solely motivated by power. And her power drive was absolutely apparent when Schroeder was still chancellor in this country. Bush and the neocons could not get Germany to join the Iraq war. Schroeder and Chirac both refused. And they were, of course, demonized for it and called uh, all these strange names. Freedom fun, fries and... Fun yeah. fact. Uh, my roommate's father was Jacques Chirac's English teacher when he was younger. Oh, yeah, nice. So we heard it. Yeah, continue. Yeah, he's very cool right. guy. Right. So uh, Schroeder was still chan st st chancellor. Merkel was not yet. But she personally flew to George Bush, met with him, and whispered it into his ear, look, if I will be chancellor, Germany would be in Iraq uh, with you today. So you see that Merkel has this... Uh, affinity to the United States, and she was also always a uh, great enemy of the Russians. And her, she is very power-driven and doesn't really have an agenda in, 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 in a moral sense. Ideologically, ideologically, there is something there, but not morally. 
and I think I think this meeting with Bush really showed that she that she is willing to do everything for power. Because naturally Germany had absolutely no interest to to join the Iraq war and that she would ally herself with with these elements. I mean to go to war essentially. And then now she's talking about humanitarianism and human rights and Germany has to help everybody and all of that is just a tool to achieve her goals essentially. Yeah, and, I call it humanitarian lipstick on a pig. Right. And it's very exactly. much akin to the the um the first attempt to infiltrate through uh environmental types greens is, you know, it's just pseudo environmental BS. It's just an anti-human mm. agenda try that tries to dress itself up in a a pro environment facade. And so now they've moved to the this humanitarianism and this kind of postmodern uh egalitarianism which is just a uh anti-western agenda trying to paint itself as something else as something humanitarian and just and it is anything but that right there there is a, a city in germany in which the germans are already already the minority right now and that is frankfurt am mine it's essentially our London. It's where all the big banks are. It has a lot of money, and on the other hand, it has a lot of slum-like places. And uh, its current mayor, still he got re-elected, unfortunately, is a essentially anti-German socialist Jew. It's called Peter Feldman. And during our 25th celebration of reunification. He invited another uh, Jewish guy from the Green Party, which we were talking about, uh, called Daniel Cohn-Bendit, a very vehement anti-German guy, who also is, uh, how should I put it? Well, he's not, he was never convicted for pedophilia, but he, he wrote books about defending pedophiles, so to speak. Our, not he exactly sounds like our, Louis Libby, who just got a pardon, who wrote fictional stories of his fantasies about underage Japanese girls in a cage being raped by a bear. Right, right. It was not that extreme, but uh, essentially the uh, Green Party did try to normalize pedophilia in the 1980s anyway. I mean, technically it was hepophilia, but it's still the, the permission to fuck underage girls or oh, boys. And he inv invited this guy uh, to our 25th uh, celebration into the, the biggest symbol of our democracy, uh, because we had a, a revolution in 19, 1848 uh, against the, um, against the uh, Prussian, uh, against the Prussian um, king. And uh, it was a democratic uh, revolution. Uh, Richard Wagner was also part of it. And, uh, and the first assembly took play, uh, place in uh, in the Paul's church, Paul's Kirche. And he invited him over there. And uh, essentially he said that Germany should be uh, dissolved into a, into a um, Babylon Europe, essentially. And because uh, Bandit also wrote a book like that. It was uh, My Home Babylon, Heimat Babylon. And um, yes, so uh, their uh, their goal is to dissolve the German people, essentially, and that is the agenda of the, of the Green Party. They, never, of, uh, they don't usually so, openly s say that. Yes, they always say, "Well, the spin is one." Well, what are their methods for? Does, Destroying Germany, first of all, or you think open borders is one of the the big weapons? It's one they can legally get away with. Yes, mm -hmm. I mean after the war there were all these plans: the Morgenthau plan, the Hutten plan, the Kaufmann plan. Uh, a certain group of people also wanted to uh, poison millions of millions of millions of uh, German civilians, which they luckily did not get away with. Morgenthau was... wanted to sterilize Germans. That too. Yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, mass immigration was also mentioned as a weapon to uh, destroy the eternal uh, savage element of the German race, or something like that. I don't know it, if it was Hutten or Morgenthau. I, th I think it was Hutten. 
It's weird that they are supposedly okay. fighting against the social Darwinistic kind of racial teleology ideas, and yet they hold them themselves. Of course, only in a dysgenic instead of a eugenic way, and but it's deeply racist, of course, of course. Mm-hmm. It's a deeply anti-German, and this 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 myth of the uh, of the Germans as the synthetic evil of mankind through all history, and uh, you see it, you see this unfortunately in, in in a lot of circles in Europe as well, especially in the British, this idea of of the, the Germans as this the race of totalitarians the, the, from the the Germanic savages who destroy all civilizations. Which uh, which yeah. countries colonized the New World and murdered ninety million people again? Right, right, exactly. But the that's, the, that's not uh, that's not a Holocaust because mm. basically. <clears throat> Well, in U.S. propaganda, it's like the reason Hitler's so bad is that's the one time it wasn't us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, and Hitler is another very complex topic. Uh, yeah, I don't want to get sidetracked into that. I'm just saying, as right. an example, that is right. the go to example in any college classroom as the epitome of evil is what if the Nazis, blah, blah, blah. Not right. not crusaders, not colonists, not conquistadors. No, it's the Nazis and not commies mm. or anything. You know, and the U.S. has murdered millions of people since World War II. I mean, uh, mm. go visit Vietnam someday. Yeah. yeah. But the long-term I, effects. The long-term effects of Agent Orange, and the same was true in Japan with the. the uh, you don't. You, you can't just count only the people who immediately died from the bombs. You also have to count all the people who died from radiation years or maybe decades after the actual uh, you, war crime. You have to count all the people who died from starvation because you destroyed all the farmland industry and animals. Yes, yes, mm. yes. Unfortunately, it is always, almost always, the, the weakest that suffer, the people who cannot defend themselves. Even if you have some kind of weird idea of war as a noble thing, you have to realize that the most people who suffer in wars are not soldiers, but civilians. And that is always the case. Always. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. And in this regard, uh, not only uh, was World War II not the worst war in our history, but the Thirty Years' War, where the uh, concept of total war was actually born. And it was uh, the war between the Protestants and the Catholics in my country. So I'm not that much a fan of Christianity, actually. Well, the phrase, uh, the final solution, came from William Sherman, not Adolf. And he, mm. was say, he was complaining that the president wouldn't let him just go murder uh, Sue and Lakota uh, babies and women. Of course, they were doing it mm. anyway. But he wanted yeah. a, a green light to go ahead and... Uh, wipe out the family base and you know the only good indian is the dead indian and that was his final solution was just kill them all yeah and, I, I used yeah. to read that about that one day yeah yeah, yeah. he's got a statue yeah. he's a civil war hero don't you know hmm. well i usually uh noam chomsky has said that the, the the usa one of the reasons why the usa likes israel so much is because it uh, reminds them of themselves that uh, a racist apartheid state and settler colony, uh, something yeah. akin yeah. to it. Justified by manifest destiny level stupidity. Right. God right. gave me this land. It's seriously that stupid. It's like, oh, 3,000 years ago, some of us may have had some ancestors here. So we're just going to butcher everybody and take this. Yeah. It's, it's sad, really. It's sad. It would be like but, Na- Native Americans invading East Russia and saying, well, 20,000 years ago, we walked across <laughs> the Strait, so we're back, and right. this is ours. <laughs> yeah. And then justify all kinds of uh, war crimes, too, with it, because manifest destiny, or because... Because God certain, said so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the, they have a secular legal reason, because you can't actually use God as a real estate agent as a legal pretext. But that's mm. certainly the motivation. And the settlers and the justification by the common people actually doing their horrendous deeds is, well, this is our land. It's ours. It's like God gave, promised it to us. It's the promised land. That's what they call it, the holy land. It's why they're there and not any other place on earth. They mm. went specifically to Palestine for uh, because they're religious zealots. 
But uh, let's talk about some of the other parties in Germany. There, there is a resistance movement to this uh, migrant crisis. That's true. It's called. Uh, it's it's it started off with uh, Pegida. Essentially, that was the first movement. That was uh, patriotic Europeans against the Islamization of Europe. And it's a rather dubious movement, which I didn't really uh, want to be part of. The, for example, this uh, this one guy I can't I can't remember his name. You will probably find this on the internet. Uh, but he was the original founder of the movement, and he laughed as Hitler on Facebook and all this crazy crazy stuff. And it attracted a, a lot of actual neo-Nazis, unfortunately. Um, so it was contaminated rather from the start. But it was uh, our only option to resist this kind of uh, policy enacted against us. I mentioned it earlier on, where they mentioned it, uh, the Feldman and Con Bennett mentioned it so clearly what the goal is. So it was our only option back then. So, well, I think part of the reason could... why why it happens is like this is the only option is because when someone starts to resist, let's say migrants illegal immigration mm. the right. the first weapon the left is going to use is to say well you're just xenophobic racist bigot you mm. know fill in your epithet well people who actually are xenophobic racist bigots don't care if you say that because that's yeah right. yes i am you know so uh a neo-nazi will still resist because they think so what if i'm racist and xenophobic and a bigot yeah mm. and and so they'll be willing to say that, but the overwhelming number of people who aren't neo-Nazis and don't want migrants, but aren't, you know, they kind of uh, kowtow because they don't want to be lumped in with neo-Nazis who are the ones screaming the loudest, and they don't right. want to get called names. And so it's like if the the ethnostaters or whatever would just be quiet, there could, you could probably get a different movement. But this mm. is what happens in Germany, the U.S., anywhere, like Occupy Wall Street, for example, the Tea Party. It starts off as one thing, and then it gets hijacked by the crazies almost immediately. Mm. Yeah, and uh, the, there is a, we, we did have a, essentially a neo-Nazi party for decades in this country. It's called the NPD. And it's uh, related to the historic National Socialism, and uh, <clears throat> They they never really got over over I think I think six percent always beyond ten percent because no one really wants Nazis if even if we could have them today, right? Mm -hmm. So the entire propaganda propaganda is totally useless and serves another agenda. And today it got to the point where this party the NPD is filled with more government agents than actual members. And that's also another thing that these people are used to demonize all kinds of opposition and. I can only uh, uh, advise people to to never stay away from all kinds of stupid uh, swastika stuff and, and fantasy uniforms and all of that. Most of it is essentially just replicating uh, the demonized caricature of victory propaganda, which you try to replicate in in the real world. It's absurd. Mm -hmm. It's absurd. It serves no purpose. It will reach nothing. It will only damage your cause. And as I said, it's filled with more government agents, and um, yeah, right. It's, same with same as Ukraine, same as the United States with Anaheim and White Area Resistance, and all these other groups. Maybe not National Alliance, but most of them are are Feds. Yeah, yes. because it fits. You know, that's what they need. It's, that's the kind of resistance they want. That's the opposition they want. Mm. They go, see, anti-Semitism has returned. It's real Nazis. Booga booga. Give us more budgetary funding. And you're talking about an insignificant, like, 800 people or something. <laughs> it's, right. It's like a communist party in America. <laughs> Is there one? Like, they have no control over anything, you know. But mm -hmm. you can use them as a boogeyman. Although you do have communists in, in the United States, only that they uh, label yeah. themselves as conservatives. <laughs> the neo it's neocons. Yeah, we have the neocons, and then we have uh, the anti-fascists, Antifa, which is a bunch of commies. But they don't mm. vote, so don't worry. <laughs> well, I don't know if they're actual communists, if they have any idea of, of ideology or if they no, just want they're, to. They're just actually, the, the proper label is idiots, but that's right. what they, um, they think they're communists. You know, that's their rhetoric. Right, Soros useful idiots army, so to speak. Yes, it is. Soros's band of, <laughs> of dumbasses. <laughs> uh, well, 
misguided people unfortunately not a lot of people are intelligent it has they all have the theatrical element too like there's a uniform you know whether it's the swastikas right, on one right, side or right. the hammer and sickle and the black right, and dressing right. like ninjas it's just like a fun <laughs> thing to do for larping teenagers or whatever to be like oh, i'm gonna dress in black and have a bandana i'm like i got this <laughs> knife and like what are you gonna do with that yeah it's what, one day adventure. you're just gonna you're gonna Someone's going to fight back and they're going to beat the shit out of you. That's all that's going to happen. Yeah, I, I did like the Battle of Berkeley with all the American flags against these uh, goons dressed in black. And that was pretty uh, invigorating to watch, actually. Yeah, you don't see a lot of Antifa in the South. Right, right. <laughs> There's a reason. Because <laughs> right, people uh, in the South have to go to work. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Antifa is unfortunately a very big problem in this country too. A very big problem, and um, they did show up to, essentially to to um, all events that the new right AFD uh, held at the first moment. Actually, the form of totalitarian persecution of the new right party um, it was very scary over many years, and I don't think that these people are controlled opposition in any way or shape or form. And the AFD was something that uh, followed Pegida and is not directly linked to it. And uh, AFD, for example, they started off as an anti-Euro, um, well, kosher nationalist party, and not even really nationalist party. They were just against the Euro and UKIP, like maybe. Make fun of me all you want. This is their plan, people. They're frickin' interdimensional invaders.